Good day and welcome to Building on the Rock. I am Pastor Chris Turner, the pastor of Rock Tabernacle Church, Milwaukee. And today we're going to get back into a teaching we began last week. We begin talking about activating God's supernatural protection for your life. God has supernatural protection that he has made available for every believer, promised in the word of God. But you have to activate it by faith. You know what you're doing and you can activate that protection and live in it. You know, we live in very, very dangerous times. And I don't have to tell you that because you know already you live in this world and and you see what's happening around us, we live in a very dangerous world. Well, the Apostle Paul said in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 that in the last days, perilous times would come or perilous times would set in. And we are in the last days. We are in the last of the last days. And those perilous times are not coming. Those perilous times are here. That word perilous means dangerous. It means furious. It means fierce. Paul said in the last days, that the times would be fierce, they would be dangerous and furious. And he goes on to explain how and why. And, um, and we'll get into that uh, in a, probably next week, talking about why the times are so dangerous and what are we to do about that. But I will say that, just starting off here today, that God does not expect us just to be victims and just to be in the earth and in these dangerous times and, and be subject to all the danger and peril and, 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 and fierceness and fear that the devil can bring into this generation. He expects us to live victoriously over it. And he has provided supernatural protection for us even in these times. And once again, we have to know uh, how to activate that and how to live in that, and God will protect you, amen? Amen, but these are violent times. Uh, there are earthquakes, there's uh, uh, natural disasters taking place, like they've, like usually throughout history, we've seen natural disasters, and but they've increased in these last days that we're living in. There's violent crimes, uh, drive-by shootings, and, and those types of things, or car crashes, and uh, even last week I heard of a building in Florida falling down on people. Just a building, just out of nowhere, just fell. And, and now they said maybe over 100 people might be dead because that building fell. Well, these are dangerous times that we live in. And uh, But how do we live above that? Not just you, but also your family. God intends for your family to live uh, uh, under his divine protection that he's made available for us. And that's what we've been talking about. And we read last week, we began last week from Psalm chapter 91. And... Uh, we're going to go back there and uh, touch on a few things that I didn't get a chance to touch on last week, but I think they're very important to us. But we need to know, first of all, that uh, uh, we need to know that divine protection is available to us. If there was ever a time that we needed to know that and needed to walk in it, it's now. We need to know that it's available to us, but also know how to activate that. Now, Psalm 91 is, many Bibles call or call it the Psalm of Protection or the Psalm of Deliverance. It was written by Moses, and uh, it's put in here for us. And I'm going to read that psalm to you. We'll just touch on a few things that, that's provided, that's promised by way of protection for you, for you and for your family. Glory to God. Amen. So I'll read Psalm 91 again, and then we'll jump off from there. Psalm 91, beginning in verse 1, says this. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust and find refuge. His shield shall be thy truth and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that lies in waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon thee, therefore will I deliver him. 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life where I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a beautiful song for protection. And it's not just something that Moses wrote because it just sounds poetic and he just wanted to write a song that was you know, poetical and had some nice phrases in it. These are promises, promises that are given to us by the, by the, by the sovereign God. Our Father, Heavenly Father, has given them to us. They're ours through Christ Jesus. They're blood-brought promises that God has provided for us. That he has every intention of fulfilling in, in, uh, in your life and in my life. Look, look at verse uh, verse 9 when I was reading it. It stuck out to me. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. In this dangerous world, you can make God your habitation and live in divine protection. And God has every intention for you to do that and for you to fulfill your life and to live a long life and be satisfied and, and live to the end of your days and not die tragically. I mean, this promise, this psalm uh, promises deliverance from tragedy. Verse 3 promises deliverance from hidden dangers and from traps, the devil. The devil has traps and, and danger. He wants you to fall into, you know, and, and get either severely injured or, or hurt or killed. Well, the Bible promises here, these promises in verse 3, promises God will deliver you from that. Verse 3 also in verse 10 says that you're delivered from deadly pestilence and disease. Deadly disease and pestilences. That would include coronavirus and any other variation of coronavirus and any other viruses and plagues that, that the devil can dream up. Amen. Verse uh, 5 talks about deliver from terror, the terror by night. And he's talking about terrorism. You know, there are terroristic, ter uh, there's terrorism in the earth today and where people do uh, acts of terrorism that bring destruction and death to people. Well, the Bible says you're delivered from that. God has every intention of delivering you from that and your family. Amen. And uh, number four, in verse five, it says uh, you're delivered from, he'll deliver you from the arrows that fly by uh, day. Amen. The arrow. Well, we don't, we don't use bow and arrows these days, but we're talking about bullets and rockets and bombs. Those are things that, that are flying and, and, uh, and, and that can do us harm. Well, God says you're delivered from those. Amen. You're delivered from disasters and destruction of all types. Verse 6. Verse 11 says there's angelic protection. Angels will protect you. They'll operate and, and, and fly swiftly and, and uh, bear thee up in their hands, the psalmist says, unless thou dash thy foot against a stone, and they will protect you, as in verse 11. And verse 16 says, once again, with long life will God satisfy you and show you salvation. That's almost pro also promised to every believer. Now, just because these things are promised, and provided doesn't mean that they'll operate and activate automatically in your life. You have to activate them through faith. There is no blessing of God that I know of in the Bible that doesn't that this happens in, in your life or just falls in your life or just manifests and shows up in your life just because you're there or just because God provided it for you. It's to the man that believes. It's to the woman that believes. Amen. It's it's according to your faith be done to you. But when you believe the word of God. You know what it says, and you believe these promises of God, and you have activated them through faith, then you can rest assured that, that these protections are yours and they'll manifest in your life. Amen? Now, we said last week, this is a little review still, we said last week that the key to activating all the promises that are in Psalm 91, all 16 verses here, the key to activating them uh, is in verses 1 and verse 2. If you can get and do verses 1 and 2, you can then see all the other promises that, that God's promised manifest in your life and show up in your life and in the life of your kids or your family or whoever you're praying for. Amen? But uh, verse 1 and verse 2 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Number one, you have to dwell in the right place. The word dwell, it means to live as a permanent resident to live as a permanent resident. Live as a permanent resident where? In the secret place of the Most High, amen? 
So, so you're, you, you, you're in the presence of God. Amen. You're, you're abiding there. The word abide means to continually spend time with. You spend time with the Lord. You spend time in the word. Amen. You know, these things are for us and they're, they, they, are, they, they, they are for every believer and any believer. But it, you have to spend time in the word of God to know what God has promised and to know what he says and to, and to build your faith on the word of God. Amen. And it takes time. You spend time in prayer. You spend time in the word of God. And you spend and you and you live for God, Amen. Glory to God. So that's that's the first two. You dwell in the secret place, of the Most High. You abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is how you activate these promises. Then number three, the Psalmist says, or Moses says, "I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord." And he's talking about speaking. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's opening his mouth and he's saying, "I'm going to say something of the Lord," Amen. And what is he saying to the Lord? I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God and him will I trust. Amen. When he's done that, when you've done that, when you're dwelling properly in the secret place and abiding in the presence of God and spending time in the, in the word of God and prayer, spending time with God in these promises, spending time in, the, in these promises that are given by the word of God, then opening your mouth and releasing by your faith, words that say, I will say of God, he is my refuge and my fortress, he is my God and him will I trust. Then all these other promises begin to kick in in your life. Glory to God. They begin to kick in. Well, it's, but it's you have to open your mouth by faith and say some things. In fact, the literal Hebrew we said last week says, for he is saying of the Lord. He is saying, means he's continually saying. It's not just something that he said one time 10 years ago or 15 years ago. I said it. 15, no, he's continually saying of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. I continually say over my kids, Lord, you're my kid's refuge. You're the fortress of my kids. You're my, you're our God. You, we trust in you to protect us and to keep us, amen, in this world, amen. I'm continually saying that on a daily basis. And when I pray and believe God, then, then once again, then when I'm doing that, then these promises are kicking in in my life. These promises begin to manifest in our lives. Glory to God. And you can do that. You need to do that. You need to read this psalm. I mean, I do. I'm not telling you I'm not making a rule or a law. But it'd be nice to read this every day. It takes just a few seconds, just a few minutes. But you read it. And, you know, when the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when you're reading this and you read it out loud, I mean, not just to yourself or in your mind or read it in your heart, but opening your mouth and saying out loud these things, opening your mouth and saying out loud these promises and, and on purpose believing these promises. And when you're doing that, faith comes by hearing. You're hearing yourself say it. It's getting into your heart. It's building faith in your heart for these promises to manifest. Amen. And they will. They will. And God will be uh, doing what he's promised in these promises and this in this psalm to bring protection and deliverance to you to your children and whoever else you're you're praying this for glory to god look at verse 11 i want to skip down to verse 11 there's one uh, uh, verse i wanted to touch on that i didn't get it to last week to focus on verse 11 says for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways he shall give his angels charge over thee. God will give his angels charge over thee. I want to talk to you a little bit about angels. We, we mentioned it last week, but I just want to go back into that because it's so important. You know, you know people look around the earth today and they, they say things like, oh, the devil and demons are, are so busy in the earth and, and look at all the bad things happening. You know, the devil and his demons are, are just so busy in the earth causing all kinds of uh, bad things and terrible things in the earth and in people's lives. And that might be true. The devil is busy. He's up to his game. But you know who's also busy? God is busy. And the angels are busy. They're real. And they're here. And they're very, very busy. They're very, very active. They're more active now than ever. Amen? And there's more of them. There's more angels than there are devils. There's more angels than there are demons. Amen? Only one-third of the angels fell with Lucifer, fell with the devil, 
So, so they're outnumbered. I mean, and there's angels that are here that they're for you. That are they're 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 uh, they're operating in the earth here, and and God intends for them to to protect you, and 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 to deliver you from from evil and from danger. Man, yeah? we were I was taught when I was a kid, and you sure were taught and you heard that. Well, you know, you have a guardian angel, and your guardian angel watches over you, and and you know I. You know, I can't point to a verse where you have a guardian angel. I believe you have more than one, actually. I believe you have more than one angel assigned to you. I can probably prove that better than I can, that you have uh, just one angel. You might have one main angel assigned to you, but you have angels, plural, assigned to you, amen, in the earth. But once again, they just don't do their work automatically. They have to be activated, like any other promise here in this psalm or any of their promises in the Word of God have to be activated. And that's, that's why I want to talk to you about, just a little bit about today, just about angels and, and the promise of, of, of their intervention in people's lives and how do you see to it that they're intervening in my life. In a number of ways. They can intervene in a number of ways. Now, we're talking about protection here, but there are angels that operate in, in your life and that will operate in your life in a number of other areas and other ways, like for provision and other things guidance and other things, but we're talking specifically today about God's protection uh, for his children, amen? So we're going to focus on just that, amen? So we're talking about angels, and I just want to show you three things from the Word of God as it pertains to angels. It's important for us to just to, just to highlight and, and to know, amen? And I'm going to turn to Hebrews chapter 1, and I'm going to read two verses here, verses 13 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 says this. It says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. See, God didn't say that to any angel. He said it to, said it to Jesus. Amen. He, he said to Jesus, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation. Amen? See, right there, it says who angels are or what they are. It says they are ministering spirits. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who are the heirs of salvation? And the heirs of salvation, he's talking about you. He's talking about me. We are the heirs of salvation, those of us who've accepted Jesus Christ. And, and But here it's interesting, he says, they're ministering spirits sent forth to minister. They've been sent forth to minister. See, we get the impression sometimes by, by things that we've been taught or things that we just thought or things that we caught, we think that, well, you know, where are the angels? Well, the angels are in heaven. They're all around the throne of God. They're worshiping the th around the throne and praising God in heaven. And there are angels in heaven. Don't get me wrong. There are angels in heaven. I can show you from the scripture that there are angels there, but not all of them are in heaven. Many of them, most of them have been sent forth. Sent forth where? Sent forth into the earth. They're here. Angels are here. Angels are not all way out in heaven somewhere just worshiping. They're, they're not, first of all, they're not little fat babies that have little wings that fold around and play harps and strum. That, that's, that's Hollywood and that's, that's the fairy tales and stuff like that. Angels are mighty spiritual beings created by God for his purpose and different purposes. Some angels are assigned to heaven. Amen. But, but, but after the resurrection of Jesus, those angels, the angels were sent forth to minister. They've been sent forth into the earth and into this atmosphere, amen? Now, you know, in the old covenant, we think about Jacob's ladder and we've seen the angels going up and down and coming to and fro, back and forth from heaven in the days of Daniel, coming back and forth. No, no, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, things are a little different now. Things are different. They've come, they've been sent forth. To That's part of your inheritance that you have in Christ Jesus is, is the, the activation in the, in the presence of angels in this earth sent forth to minister to us 
the, the Amplified says, minister to and for those who are the heirs of salvation. They're here to minister to us, and they're here to minister for us. Amen? Amen. So they're, they're real. They're here. They're now. Amen? They're present. They're present. And, and I believe this room right here where I'm at, there are angels present. Amen? And they're present with you where you are. Amen? The angels that have been assigned to you. Amen? And they're here with an assignment to minister to and to for, for those who are the heirs of salvation. <laughs> now, when I say minister to and for, I'm not talking about an angel going to get your pizza or an angel going to help you find my car, go find your, my, my car, bring it to me. Yeah, I didn't like that. But they're ministering on behalf of the covenant promises that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus. Angels are, are, are here to see to it as we stand in faith and stand in the word of God and stand in his promises. They're here to operate to see to it that, that what God has said, that what, if you're standing on and believing, will, will manifest and show up in your life. Glory to God. I mean, that's the first thing to know is that they are here. They're not way out there somewhere. They're, not, they're here. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Second thing you need to know is that they are very, very capable of handling their business. Very capable are angels. I'm turning back to Psalm 103. Psalm 103 is one of my favorite psalms in the Bible. It begins, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Then he begins to list many of the benefits of God uh, that, that God has given his people. But way down here at the last few verses at the end of this psalm, we're in Psalm 103, and look in verse 20, where it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. Hear that? Angels excel in strength and do his commandments. They excel in strength. They're mighty. They're not weak. They're strong. They're, they're powerful, powerful beings, strong beings able to do and to, and, to, and to help and to deliver whenever needed, whenever God has well, by way of deliverance for you or protection or, or even provision for you. They're able to deliver. They're able. They're very capable. In fact, one angel in the days of uh, Hezekiah, Back in uh, 2 Kings, one angel killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. One angel. So I was like, well, God, send an army of angels to help me. You don't need an army. You don't need a whole bunch. God, just, God sent one angel at, at the, in the days of Hezekiah, and one angel wiped out 185,000 in one night. How mighty is that? How powerful are they? Amen. Well, you've been given angels assigned to you. They're very strong, very capable. Amen. That's, that's something else you need to know about. But the third thing, this is what I want to focus on right here. The third thing that you need to know about angels is still, I'm still in Psalm 103 in verse 20, where it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that one, they excel in strength, they do his commandments, they do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hear that? That right there is what I'm honing on. Because that's how you activate angels in this life, is that they hearken unto the voice of your word. Not what it says here. It says the voice of his word. And the his, he's talking about God's word. They, they're God's angels. They excel in strength. They do God's commandments. They don't do your commandments. I heard people are trying to command their angels and this and that. No, they don't, they don't do your commandments so much as they do God's commandments. Now, if you're speaking the word of God, that's something different, amen? But they do God's commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Amen? So that's how you activate angels. Is Notice that they're hearkening unto the voice of his word. It didn't say the angels hearken unto the word of God. It said they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. It's a little difference. You hear that? It says they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. It means that angels might, angels, I'm sure they know the word of God. I'm sure your angels, the ones, the one, the main one that's assigned to you, but others that are assigned to you, they can read Psalm 91 and they read all these 
areas of deliverance that, that God has promised for you, they know that. But they're not going to just do the word of God for you. They're not just going to read your Bible for you and read the promises of God for you and make sure that all the promises come to pass in your life. They're waiting for a voice. They're hearkening to the voice of God's word. They're waiting for a voice. Well, that's where you come in. See, because God's already spoken his word. God's already spoken his word. These promises are already been God, spoken by God. Amen? But they're waiting for a voice. Whose voice? Your voice. When you take the word of God and you add your voice to the word of God, that's when angels begin to operate. Angels are waiting for a voice. Are you going to say something out of your mouth in, uh, in line with the word of God, either quoting the word of God directly or in line with the word of God that angels can hearken unto and move to and to, to bring to pass? That's the question, because that's what they, they operate on. They're not going to, they don't read your Bible for you and just do automatically what God has promised in his word will happen. Oh, but when you read the word of God and it's in your heart by faith and you begin to give voice to it, you can begin to give voice to the word of God. You begin to speak it and to say it out of your mouth. That's when angels are hearkening. Angels are listening. Angels are moving on behalf of that. And they begin to uh, bring forth deliverance or the promise, whatever promise that you're standing on that, that, that they're involved with. Glory to God. But once again, if the word of God is never given voice to, and sadly, many of God's children never give voice to the word of God. They never open their mouth and speak the promises of God. They ever never open their mouth and declare what God said. They never open their mouth and and. In, 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 in prayer or in agreement with the word of God and to, and to give their angels something to operate on. And so their angels, they're still there because the Bible says they've been, they've been sent forth. At the resurrection of Jesus, they've been sent forth. They've been sent forth into this earth. And they're here to minister to and for you because you have inherited salvation. You have certain promises that you have inherited and we're talking about the promises of protection and deliverance that, that you've been given. Those are some of the promises, but the other promises as well. But you've been given those promises and angels are here and they're listening. They're listening. And sadly, many even of God's children say things that their angels cannot operate on. They can't function. They don't know what you, they don't know why you would speak such. You're like, you're, you're, to, to the angels, man, you are, you have authority in the earth. You're like a king holding court. Your words carry authority. Your words carry power. Your words mean something. And God's children will never take time to fill their hearts and their mouths with the word of God. But they'll say other things that are just contrary and against the word of God. They'll, sing, they, they'll say things like, well, you know, uh, you know, it's just so violent out here. People all getting shot and killed constantly. Hope nobody, you know, it, it, why would you speak death and speak tragedy over yourself and over your over your life or over your family? You don't do that. Don't don't speak that way. What you do is you speak in line with the word of God. Yes, it's, you might acknowledge. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a mean world out there. It's some dangerous streets out there. But my God has given His angels charge over me, and they keep me in all my ways. Amen. God has promised to be my protector, my deliverer. He's my God and him will I trust. See, I'm speaking right there in line with the word of God. And when I do that, angels are hearkening. And the Bible says they excel in strength. And they give heed to the voice of the word of God. And the Bible says they, act, they, they go forth and they make sure that what God's word has said out of your mouth is coming to pass. Amen. So if you say nothing, that's not cool. That's not good. Not gonna get you. Not, not, not gonna get you these promises manifested. If you say the wrong thing, that's really not good. Don't say I, I'll see you tomorrow if a truck doesn't hit me. <laughs> funny, isn't it? It's not funny. People get hit by. You know, I like to joke and laugh, but there's some things I don't joke about. I don't joke about tragedies like that happening to me or my family because it's not funny. But but I do. Uh, I have a sense of humor and nothing wrong with that. But but there's some joking I don't joke about. I don't joke about tragedy. Because I want my angels to activate and to be moving and to be 
and be available and to be operating at all times on behalf of the promises of God to see to it that the protection that God has promised me manifest in my life and in my kids' lives. Amen? You know, I have a, I have a friend. He's a very close friend of mine. He's a pastor friend of mine. And um, his name is Pastor Tayo. And uh, Pastor Tayo grew up in, in Nigeria. He's lived here for uh, many years, but he grew up in Nigeria and he worked there for many years. And when he was in Nigeria, he worked um, at an at a, at a oil company there. And, and part of his job was to travel around on the roads there. And he would go to different gas stations and take orders and, and do it. And he, it. His job required a lot of driving, a lot of driving, always on the road. And he would go from place to place. And he was always in a, a strict time schedule. So he had to, he had to move quickly to get his route done and get his assignments done as he worked for this oil company and uh and you know in the way he used to drive he first of all the roads there aren't the best at least the time when he was living there in nigeria they weren't the best and 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 but you know but they were passable but and so but between that and between the, the way he had to drive to get there people used to always joke even people in his family used to always joke with him saying tayo you're going to get killed one day on these roads you're driving all around, all around this region, all around these areas to these places here up in the mountains. You have to drive and all down to these places. And he said, one day you're going to get, you're, you're going to, they're going to, you're going to get killed in the car accident one day. And he's always joking about that. And he used to always say out of his mouth, he said, no, I'm not, I'll never die in a car crash. I'll never die in a car crash, Pastor Tyler would always say. He said, there's never been a car built that can, that, that will kill Pastor Tayo, I'm, or he, he didn't call himself Pastor Tayo, but that will kill Tayo. That's what he was always answering to people that we used to just say that, well, you know, Pastor, you're gonna, you, the way you drive, you're gonna, you're gonna get killed one day. He said, no, I'm not. I'll never die in a car crash. But also, Pastor Tayo, he's a man of prayer. And he's a man of the word. And every day before he would go out in his routes, he'd pray. He'd pray over himself, and he and he, he would pray along with speaking about Psalm 91. That's one of the things that he would pray every day. For, for the Lord, Lord, I want to thank you that you give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. And they bear me up in their hands as I dash my foot against a stone. I want to thank you for that. And then when he'd pray other things, but that's one of the things he would pray every day. He would say that. Not in his head, not in his heart, but out of his mouth. He would say that and pray that. And it, so he said this went on for once some time. But he said one day, he said, one, I don't know if it was one night, he was driving down one of the roads, down one of the highways there. And he said he came around, came around the way there. And he said, in his lane, he said, I'm driving my car. I'm going at a pretty quick pace. But in my lane was a semi-truck. In my lane, coming head on with me. And it happened so fast, and he said, I couldn't veer over to the, I couldn't cut to the right because it was, uh, you know, uh, an embankment there or something there that was, you know, I said, I, I had no time to do anything. And he said, and I had no time to pray or to say anything. And, and he said, but, I, but this semi-truck was coming head on to me. My pastor friend was telling me this. And, um, and he said, at the last second, I, as I braced for impact, I braced, I was suspecting that this truck was going to hit me. I braced for impact. I could see the truck driver. He was he 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 was startled behind the wheel of his truck, this semi truck, and he said, and and, and so, but just as the impact was about to take place, he said, I saw an angel fly from my right. He flew into the driving compartment of that truck, took the wheel. They see the semi-truck driver had the wheel, but that angel grabbed the wheel with that semi-truck driver and jerked that wheel and whipped it, whipped that wheel, and that truck at the last second veered around, whipped around, veered around, and just missed my, my pastor friend's car. It would have been a head-on collision with a semi-truck going at high speed. And you know, if you're in a, in a car in a semi-truck, High speeds, head to head, is not very good for the car. You know that, don't you? It's pretty obvious. So he probably would have been, he probably would have been killed that night in that car. But something that he had always been praying and always been saying, 
He said he'll give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you give your angels charge over me. And, and also to his friends that had been telling him, Pastor, Tyle, you're going to get killed one day in a car. He's, yeah, I'm not going to agree with that. I'm not going to say that and agree with that. I don't joke that way. I'll never die in a car crash. That's what he'd say. But, but he said, I saw that angel at the last second. I saw he came up. He just flew in to that driving compartment, that truck, took control of that wheel and jerked it and jerked that truck out of my way. And I was able to get around without even making an impact with that truck. Was that a coincidence? No. Well, why did that happen? Well, some might say, well, that's just because the Lord sovereignly intervened in that situation. Mm, no. You know, because I know also of another minister. He was a pastor. He was a good man, a good pastor. And, and he, you know, you, you can say, well, my pastor friend might have been spared because he was a pastor, he's a minister, and, and God had a calling upon his life. But this other man, he's a minister too. And he was killed in a, in a head-on car. No, it wasn't a head-on, but it was a very tragic, similar, very tragic car crash with a truck. And uh, left his wife, left his kids, and, and it died tragically, and a, and a believer. And I'm not judging anyone wrong. I'm not judging anyone to say he was bad, or he's, but deliverance belonged to both those men. The same promise belonged to both those men. But I know that one man was activating the word of God on a continual basis by the words that he would say, by thanking the Lord for, for, the, for, for, uh, for the promises in this psalm that God would protect him and keep him and deliver him, that angels would keep him safe. I know that angels hearkened diligently the Bible says, to the word of God. They listen to the word of God, hearkening diligently, listening to the voice of God's word. And the angels were constantly hearing his voice saying, and that's what, that's what causes them to activate and to excel in strength and to, and to do these great things. It's not just God picking and choosing who he will and who he won't deliver. Oh, I, I'll deliver you. I won't deliver you. And it's not things that we've made up. Well, you know, maybe the Lord was done with that pastor. He was done with him and wanted him to come home. What? He had a wife and two small kids and the Lord was done with him? No. It was a tragic loss where he lost his life. But we don't know what he was saying and believing. But I do know what my pastor friend, my, my friend, Pastor Tayo, I know what he was saying. I know what he's believing. And his saying and believing uh, from his heart and his praying in line with the word of God is in the ears of God. It's in the ears of Jesus. Amen. Remember last week we said how that Jesus said, and when you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the angels. I know that it, it was the words that he would constantly say about God protecting him was in Jesus' ears, but he also, also in the ears of the angels. And I know that that angel came into that compartment and delivered him. Amen. But once again, we're getting back to you and me. God has every intention for you and me to live in deliverance, live in safety in this world, even though it's the most dangerous generation that Satan can produce. It's, it's here and it's now, but it's not automatic. It's not automatic. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say this. It came to my heart to say it. I don't, I'm not talking about praying to angels. We don't pray to angels. You have angels, you have a guardian angel, but you have angels that are assigned to you. You don't pray to them. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen? You pray to your Father in Jesus' name. You speak and can declare the word of God in the presence of your Father. You say things of the Lord, like the psalmist said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. You say these things in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of the Father, and, and angels are listening and hearkening. Amen? But you don't pray to them. Amen? But once again, they are listening. Amen? Glory to God. And so, and, and, and you can do that. You can do this over yourself, over your family, and you need to do it on a continual basis. Amen? Don't ever get beat out of the game of life like, like that and go away in some tragedy. And when you get to heaven, you know what you're going to do? You're going to meet your angel. And among, among other people that you see, among other beings that you see in heaven, you're going to see your guardian angel. And you're going to say, whoa, this dude was huge. This dude was big. And he'll, you say, who, who were you? I, I, I was your angel. 
And he's gonna say, well, 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 bro, where were you at when, when I was dying in that tragedy? You know what your angel will say? Dude, why didn't you say something to the Lord? What were you saying of the Lord your whole life? Did you ever take time to read the word and to get it in your heart and to say it out loud and to speak and declare some things before God about your protection and deliverance? I was waiting for you to say something. He's not going to be upset or mad at you, but, you know, give him something to do. Amen. Your angels are there. They're capable. They're for you. And they're, they're ready to move and activate and see to it that salvation and deliverance is manifested in your life. And today we're talking in particular about that of, of deliverance from danger. Amen? Amen. So this is our teaching so far. So we're talking about activating God's divine protection for us. And I want you to know that it's so important what you say out of your mouth. Are you saying something of the Lord? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them Say so. Say, speak about your redemption. Thank God for your, thank God for deliverance. Thank God for protection for your kids. Thank God as they go to school and they will be going to school, I guess, back in school uh, this fall and we'll be pleading the blood of Jesus over them. That's just something else we're going to talk about in weeks to come, about God's protection and deliverance. There's power in the blood. I speak in the name of Jesus over them. There's something else we're talking about too, about about God's protection and deliverance. There's power in the name of Jesus, but there's also power in the promises, in the words of God that you speak out of your mouth and angels are hearkening, waiting and ready and capable and, and activating and quick to bring deliverance to you and for you because it belongs to you. Amen. So now we're going to stop right there for today, but if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, you can do that by simply praying a simple prayer. All you got to do is say a prayer like this. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I need a savior. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and you rose again from the dead. Come into my heart and save me. If you pray a prayer like that, we believe you got born again. And what you need to do now is just simply get into a church that, that teaches and, and believes the word of God. And, uh, and you begin to grow in the things of God. And good things are coming your way. God has a good plan for your life, and he'll manifest it to you and manifest it in your life. And one of the things he has for you is divine protection and divine deliverance for you. The angels are there. They're here in the earth waiting and ready to, to see to it that it manifests. And God's hand is strong to deliver in this hour. Amen. Until next week, I am Pastor Chris Turner. And this is building on the rock. Amen.